Hi, I'm Dalton Quigley, and today is day four of my vlog. <laughs> so today we're gonna go over two different topics. One of them is diatomaceous earth, which is really great for use around the house to control pests and whatnot, and we'll go over that. The other one is chlorine and how it affects the garden and landscape. So stay with me. Diatomaceous earth is a powder that you can buy at lots of places. Right here is a little bit of it. It's, it's really super fine. It's kind of like baby powder or maybe finer. And it's made from these little microscopic creatures. When they died, they became fossilized. We dig that stuff up, grind it up real fine. We take it in its powdery form and use it for other stuff like this. You can use it to control those little black ants and spiders by making a barrier around your home. You can use it on pets to control pests. You can use it in toothpaste. You can use it in cat litter. And that was some great information about diatomaceous earth. So our second topic is chlorine and what it's doing in the garden. But before I get to that, I wanna tell you that I have a website called landscapetheyard.com that's got some great pictures for your website if you're a landscaper and you happen to need them. So great, let's take a look at what chlorine is doing in the garden. When you get a glass of water from the sink, it's safe to drink. It's called potable. So that means it doesn't have lots of bacteria and pests and whatnot that can hurt us. That's because there's chlorine in the water. Chlorine is a chemical. It makes our water safe to drink because it kills stuff. If it kills stuff, what does it do in the soil, huh? Researchers at Colorado State University, and there'll be a link down below in the text if you're on YouTube, but researchers there have found that the chlorine in water affects the top half of an inch of soil. So beneath that, everything else appears to be okay, but imagine if you took the, the main part, which most plants bring, breathe, eat, and drink within the top two inches of soil, if you take that very top layer where they're absorbing a lot of the nutrients from the air and whatnot, and you took out a lot of the microorganisms, that's what would happen if you used chlorinated water to water your plants. Huh? This has been day four. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. There's usually a little share button down there right next to the Facebook. Share that with your friends because I'm sure they got those little black ants and they don't want them in the house. Or they've got spiders and this stuff is really good for that, the diatomaceous earth. Or there are people who are trying to grow some vegetables at home and they want to make sure they get more production, maybe some more tomatoes and onions and whatnot. In that case, you want to use water from a rain barrel or some other source or maybe use a filter so that you kind of filter out some of that chlorine. Anyway, stay with me. Watch my videos. Next one is going to be day five and subscribe. Don't forget to go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe. I want to see you there and see you next time on day five. Bye.